Hello and welcome to this episode of the Industrial Engineering Notebook. The topic of this episode is point statics. This topic is important when trying to understand the manufacturing process at your factory. It also comes into play when you're doing ergonomic analysis and also just being able to have basic conversations with the mechanical engineers at your factory. Understanding point statics is really important. So let's break this word down. Point, when we say point, we are talking about a single point that has mass. So are there really single points that have mass? Not, not really. Um, but this is just the basic starting point for analysis. And then, you know, building off of this, we can do more realistic objects, but you just need to be able to analyze a single point first. The field of statics is just the study of forces at no speed or constant speed. So basically looking at forces on things that don't move uh, or are moving, but at moving at a constant speed. So if you're in a car and you're going 60 miles per hour, you have it in cruise control. Uh, you, you, if you didn't have windows and you didn't know that you were in a car, there, there wouldn't be a way to tell. Unless the car accelerated or turned, then you'd be moving around and you'd be like, wait a second, this is suspicious. So if you're not accelerating, uh, it's basically the same as having no speed. So no speed or constant speed. So we're going to look at an example here. We have our x-axis and our y-axis. And that right there, that is our point mass. That is the little point that we're going to analyze. We'll add some forces here. We have a 30 Newton force coming in here at a 20 degree angle from the x-axis. We have uh, just a force I called F1 up here in the direction of the y-axis. And then force 2 or F2 here and that is at an angle of 45 degrees from the y-axis. Notice that we have two unknowns here, F1 and F2, and I'm gonna introduce two equations. The sum of, the way you read this is the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero, and the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. So in both of these directions, all of the forces need to cancel out because remember, you're not accelerating, you're either moving at a constant speed or you're totally still. In your first statics class, you, you always wanna make sure that your unknowns, the number of unknowns equals the number of equations. Let's actually start with the sum of the forces in the y direction. We'll write out this equation. And the first force that I notice in the y direction is F1. So we'll just write that down. That's the first force. And then I, what else do I see? Well, I see uh, right here. This has a component, I mean, it's pointing 20 degrees from the x-axis, but you can see it has a little component of it that it is kind of pushing upwards a little bit. So how do we, it's not 30 Newtons, it's something probably a little bit less than that. So how do we figure that out? Well, we're gonna draw a triangle. Sweet, sweet triangles. Okay, and so the hypotenuse of this triangle we'll call 30, just like our 30 Newtons over there. And then we want, to, uh, we want to know what these components are. How long are these sides of the triangles? We know the angle right there is 20 degrees. And now it's time for some sweet, sweet trigonometry for our sweet, sweet triangle. So 30 here, if we want to know the length of this side, it's just, it's the opposite. So you remember Sokotoa. So we have 30 and then the opposite means sine. So 30 sine 20 degrees. That's how long that side is. And then up here, we're gonna have 30, and this length is adjacent to the angle we're talking about, so it's Sokotoa, so 30 cosine 20 degrees. Okay, back to summing forces in the y direction. For this 30 Newtons, how much of it is pushing in the y direction? Well, this is the upward direction, so 30 sine 20 degrees, so we're gonna write that down. At this point, you've probably noticed this looks a little fishy. This point, I said this point isn't moving and you're looking at these forces and you're like, I don't know, it looks like all of the forces are going in this direction, and you'd be right. So you kind of suspect that maybe some of these forces are actually pointing in the opposite direction, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. We're gonna take a deep breath. We're just gonna look at the math and we're gonna see what kind of answer it gives us at the other end. So the other force that we need to consider that has a component in the Y direction is F2, and so we gotta draw another triangle. There's the perfectly drawn triangle, and then the length of the hypotenuse is F2. And, oh, we have our angle here of 45 degrees. The length of this side, this side is opposite of the angle, so we're going to use sine. So we're going to have F2 sine 45 degrees. And the length of this side is just going to be F2 cosine 45 degrees. Great, so back to summing forces in the y direction. What part of F2 is in the y direction? Well, it's here. And actually, because we have this arrow pointing downward like this, this is negative 
f2 cosine 45 degrees because if this is pushing down in the y direction and the positive direction for y is up is going up like this and the positive direction for x is going this way putting that in our equation we have minus f2 cosine 45 degrees and then plugging our sine and cosine into our calculator we'll get an equation that looks like this and we still have two unknowns in this equation so we got to use our second equation which is the sum of the forces in the x direction so for the 30 newton force in the x direction we have 30 cosine 20 degrees so we'll put that in f1 doesn't have any component in the x direction so we can just ignore that and then F2, in the X direction, we have F2 sine 45 degrees. And that in our calculator, we'll get this. Then we have an equation with just one variable. So now we can solve for F2, and we'll get F2 equals negative 39.7 newtons. And that kind of solves the problem we were looking at earlier. So because we did all the math and F2 came out as negative, that indicates that F2 here in this original drawing is pointing in the opposite direction that it should be. So really F2 is pointing that way. Okay, we're not gonna change the sign or anything. We're gonna leave it just as it is. We're gonna let the math play out entirely and then we can redraw the picture if we'd like. So F2 equals 39 points, negative 39.7 Newtons. And we're gonna plug this value for F2 up here. So then we just have uh, F1 is the only variable up here. And that will give us F1 equals negative 38.4 Newtons. So again, F1 is negative which means that this is the wrong direction. It should be pointing in the exact opposite direction, but that's okay. So we can redraw this diagram with the forces pointing in the correct direction, putting our little arrows here in the correct direction, and then writing out uh, the, the amount of force that we found for each of those arrows, and then we have our angles here. So this makes more intuitive sense, right? So we have this 30 Newton force pushing the point mass right there, and it would make sense that these other forces are coming in to cancel it out, going in the opposite direction of this force. To sum up, without knowing anything about these two forces, we just kind of knew where they were pointing. Uh, we could figure out how many Newtons they were pushing back against this force, which is kind of cool. And there are a lot of applications to this uh, in, in physics, and you can move from just doing a single point to doing a larger body with a specific shape, and then you can incorporate a third equation for torque. Uh, but this is just the very basic, some of the forces in the x direction, some of the forces in the y direction, and then using those two equations to solve for two unknowns in our diagram. If you thought this was helpful, hit the like button. Or you could subscribe, or you could do both, I guess. Subscribe, let me know to keep making these videos. And if you have questions, put them in the comments, and I'll do the best that I can to answer those questions.